All right, welcome to another edition of the Inside Franklin Athletics podcast. I've decided to start calling this Catching Up With because it had no name and I didn't really have a good entrance. So that's what I'm going to do. This is Catching Up With. I have done several of these and I can safely say that this is, besides my brother, the person who I have known the longest that I have interviewed. Uh, we have with us today 1997 Franklin Community High School graduate, Joe Hoagland. Joe, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. So before we get started on um, just your growing up, your career and everything, uh, why don't you tell everyone what you're up to now? Well, uh, I'm 42 years old now, believe it or not. And uh, I work for a company. We uh, build equipment for like Ford, GM and Chrysler. Uh, so I handle some of the bigger accounts for the company, work from home. The company's based out of Michigan. Uh, married with two boys, uh, one just turned nine, one just turned two, or uh, not two, just turned five. So uh, chasing them around, there. coaching sports with them, and that's about the extent of what I do on a daily basis. <laughs> All right. So let's just get started. Let's kind of go back. Um, growing up in Franklin, how did you get involved in sports, and, and what all did you play growing up? Oh, man, it kind of depended on the year. Uh, growing up uh, were the usuals, football, basketball, baseball. Uh, occasionally played a little bit of recreational soccer. Uh, then got into kind of middle school and, uh, you know, stuck with baseball and basketball and uh, a little bit of football. Um, then, you know, got to high school and uh, primarily was soccer, basketball and track. Um, I decided that I didn't have a future in baseball and I sure as heck didn't have one in football. I was way too skinny. So uh, pretty much stuck with soccer and basketball for the most part and occasionally uh, did different jumping events and, and track. And that was really about it. Yeah. Now, with you, as far as, um, as as just growing up, we've had several people on who have talked about the Boys and Girls Club and everyone there, where did, where was your focus? Like what, what are some of your memories, the places or anything? Uh, well, living as close as, as I did to the boys club, as you well know, um, you know, it was always walking distance, um, could see it out my back door. So, you know, pretty much every day, every other day at the boys club, um, that was when most of the sports were run through there before they kind of became club sports and travel sports and stuff like that. So, you know, primarily grew up uh, playing sports through the boys club uh, and obviously the, you know, uh, basketball court behind my house that the Parks and Recreation owns played a lot back there, um, but just kind of slowly got involved through those uh, different activities and, and um, just kind of stuck with me for a while and then just kind of progressed along the way. Yeah. And as far as teams that you were on, like, who do you kind of remember from growing up? Uh, playing with any specific teammates or anything? Um, honestly, a lot of us uh, team-wise played together, uh, you know, since we were little. Uh, I mean, I, I remember Travis Jones, Mark Pitcher, Aaron Parker, all those guys were uh, primarily on, you know, we were always in the same league, if not the same team, um, you know. And as you grow, you know, kids move to different sports. Uh, you know, some of my friends that I might have grown up playing with ended up moving on to basketball or, or you know, run, you know, track or cross country or stuff like that. But as far as the ones that I played an entire career with would, you know, probably be Mark and, and Parkhurst and, and Travis and uh, Sappenfield. Uh, you know, he was a year younger, but he was usually, you know, in those leagues as well. Yeah. Now I have I have something I want to show you and let's see if you recognize this. OK. Let's see it. All right. You see that? That's got to be the basketball goal outside your house. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can re I can remember when that was a parking pad for your old man's car. I remember when he ended up uh, black topping that over and putting in a goal. And I can honestly say now, full disclosure where I played the majority of my basketball, even though we always <laughs> dropped it down to an eight foot goal so we could all dunk on it. But uh, <laughs> we couldn't now it, it's still standing today, isn't it? No, it's come full circle. It's now it's now a uh, parking pad for dad again. Oh, I got you. OK, yeah. They, so they um, it just randomly like was gone. 
my or I, I my dad took it down, I think. But I was one time I just went back there. I was like, hey, dad, where's the basketball goal? And he goes, oh, I took it down. It was getting ready to fall. I'm like, what'd you do with it? He's like, oh, I just threw it away. I'm like, you threw it away? Like, I would have done something with that goal. Right. Like, like that backboard or that rim. Like, that thing's like 30 years. Like, that was hundreds of thousands of shots on that goal. Like, Oh, yeah, because that was perfect. You know, there were, there were two alleyways there that nobody drove down, so it didn't matter where the ball ended up. Yeah, but I, I can remember many a many a game playing there, and and if not there, you know, down at the park or, you know, football games down at Jack Morgan Park before they, you know, it, before it turned into the the trail and all that type yeah. of stuff. But oh yeah, I'll I'll recognize that goal anytime. <laughs> yeah, that's it's uh so I uh, so Adam Sego drew that when do you remember him taking the he took the picture and he laid under it a couple times. And he he took the picture, drew it, and it won a uh, an award. And so they hang they hung it up at the old high school. And well, Jeff um, was walking. Oh, probably this is probably six or seven years ago, or was in a la- in a, a one of the like off hallway rooms, and there was a student in there. And so we went in there, and he looked. He's like, "That's my basketball goal." And he went over and looked, and it was Adam Sego, 1997. And so he took wow. it. It's been in his room. And, yeah, he, he sent me that picture. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. So it was, it's actually really cool to have that. But, yeah, when it was a good spot because there was – the fence was not ideal. This is not an ideal spot, but it was – Oh, uh, I'm sure I've still got plenty of scars from that fence somewhere on this body. <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't have it at seven feet because that was too, that was too unfair for you. We needed to have it at eight feet because we right. needed to, you had to jump a little bit and we wanted to be able to paper under my, under my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah. So anyway, I, I was wondering if you'd recognize that. I figured you probably, Oh yeah, I can, I can still see it as clear as day. Yeah. So, all right. So we, you talked about, you talked about high school and you talked about, uh, you talked about playing soccer um, and just kind of go over that for a little bit. Uh, we want to focus more on basketball and everything for that. Um, but uh, soccer, you know, how did that go for you? You were there for the introduction to a new team, um, the new the new yeah. sport and everything. So just talk about that. Wasn't it your freshman year, my sophomore year was the first year of the team? Yep, yep. Um, and I don't know what possessed us all to, you know, because I hadn't played, like I didn't play soccer in middle school or anything like that. Um, you know, I remember, you know, as kids, we all played in the, you know, the boys club thing and, and they had soccer goals, you know, down at Jack Morgan park or pump or, you know, whatever it's called. And yeah, I don't know how that all came up, but it, it turned out to be a blast. I mean, we obviously weren't very good, but we had a heck of a time. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, at the point where I think, you know, whether it was some of our primary sports or not, it was a, it was an excuse to stay in shape. Um, you know, just get a sweat in and, and, you know, I think we had a pretty good time. I, I enjoyed Chuck Van Horn as a coach. Um, you know, he was learning just like the rest of us, but at least, you know, win or lose, we had a, you know, had a pretty fun time. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I guess it was an easy, it was a lot easier on me cause I was standing in goal. You guys were the ones running around. I was just, you know, anytime they, the ball was in the air, just pretending it was a rebound and trying to go and get it. Um, so I, I got less of a workout than you guys did, but yeah. it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I, I, you know, thought I, and shockingly enough, I actually got a few offers for, you know, to play college soccer and, and looked into a few of them, but you know, it, it, uh, at the time it was, you know, more focus on basketball, but I, I really enjoyed playing soccer. Yeah. It was interesting because, you know, we played boys and girls club and the, the youth travel leagues and, and you get in those situations and, then you get up to freshmen where you're playing against kids who have played. I mean, you know, we played when we were seven or eight years old, but it was just those little leagues and we'd play in the fall. And then, mm-hmm. but these guys are playing all year and you get in those first couple games and it's just, it's totally different. And, and as a, someone who's been a coach now, I totally look at the job that, that Chuck Van Horn did kind of differently and, and kind of appreciate the situation that he and uh, Carlos Baronis was put into and, 
and just how difficult of a job that they had. And it was a steep learning curve. <laughs> I know, I know that. Oh yeah. I can remember Chuck, you know, occasionally he had, he'd have a book in his rugby bag and he'd get that book out and he'd kind of thumb through it to where we couldn't see it. And then he'd, you know, come up with something, but yeah, Car Carlos was a wealth of knowledge because obviously yeah. he had a history in it. And um, he reached out to me a few months ago on LinkedIn. I was happy to hear from him. I, oh, yeah. you know, I hadn't he heard from him in a long time. I think he's down in Florida or something. Uh, I think he's still working for Con Air. Oh, wow. Um, but I think, you know, once they shut down down here, they must have, you know, given him opportunity or something in Florida. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. I, you know, like I said, we – we, you know, the Ben Davises in the center groves, they put it on us pretty good, but you know, we were occasionally, we would get a, a Waldron or Waldron. somebody that we could, we could log, we could log a win or two on those guys. <laughs> we, we saw, I saw Waldron on the schedule and I was just like, well, at least we got one win coming up. Uh, yeah. At least, at least we're going to do something in that one. <laughs> so, and then your, I mean, your senior year, I remember we were pretty decent because we had um, Jared Law, uh, had come along and he he was pretty tough as far as a uh, forward and then Gavin shook and uh, we had some pretty good players uh, Jeremy Reese so your junior or your senior year I know I know it was it was a little bit I better. think we went about 500 didn't we that yeah I think it was remember we had a couple foreign exchange students that were pretty darn good too yeah so there was the, do you remember it was Speedway it was their first game that they were allowed to play. And so the I think it was Polo was his name. And Bart, Bart Polo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so he played JV and scored like three or four goals. And he was, you know, he was excited. He scored goals. And so he was kind of doing the airplane and stuff. And he played in the varsity game. And um they didn't they were not having the fact that he had done that and showed up their JV kids. And I remember he took a pretty solid beating that game. Uh but yeah. I remember that too, yeah. Yeah, because they also they also had a clock and so it would count down and you'd see how much time was left in the game. So one of the main guys who did it, and I was not, I will not sit here and say I was a good soccer player or an aggressive soccer player at all. But I saw the time was running out and I'm like, well, I think I know what I can do. And I got in a really, really, really cheap shot on one of the main guys who did it. When I saw the clocks getting at five, four, he had the ball right in front of me. And I reached around with my foot, got the ball and then shoved him from behind and landed on him. It was, it was, I mean, it was warranted. Like, I would do it a thousand times. But in the middle of the game, I'm not doing that. But it was it was a bad one. But, yeah, that was so – so that was uh, – yeah, that was – I remember that. But, um, okay, so let's focus now. Let's talk about basketball. Um, obviously, uh, that your, your height is a great advantage for you when you're playing basketball. Um, you know, when you started, when you started in, in high school, were you six, six, seven when you were a freshman? Oh, no. Were no, you six? I was, I, I grew just shy of six inches between my sophomore and junior year. Okay. So I was like six, two, six, three. Oh, okay. Um, Cause I, I can remember coming in as a freshman and it's funny. I still, I still talk to Jim Higdon a lot. And, you know, he was kind of one of the only people that really wanted to keep me around. I don't know what he saw or figured out that maybe I was going to grow or something. But I went from like a three man to a five man in you know, six or eight months. Yeah. And it was kind of, you know, my, in, you know, in between my sophomore and junior year, it was a little difficult for me body wise growing that fast, which is why I've, my, you know, knees are so screwed up now. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, between my sophomore and junior years when I really, really shot up yeah so now you you were always a little a little taller is that correct i was above average um but you know i mean when you know my freshman you know sophomore year i was you know aaron parkhurst was always taller than me growing up and some of those other guys i played with um and then it just kind of you know 
over the summer or something, it just, you know, I lengthened out a little bit and all of a sudden I was six, eight. Yeah. Okay. I know you were taller than me. So, <laughs> well, <funny>. yeah, <laughs> it's, it took me a while to get, well, to, to grow it all. So, um, okay. So just talk, talk about, you know, starting in, in your freshman year, Jim Higdon, um, was there around you and just kind of some of your early memories, freshman and sophomore year of basketball? Well, honestly, my earliest memories of, you know, freshman year, I, I'm, I want to say I was probably on the B team as a freshman. Um, you know, there was, there were, you know, in between my sophomore and junior year, there were a handful of kids that were a lot better when we were growing up. And then everybody kind of caught up to them as we got into early high school. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I was a B team kid and really wasn't all, I, mean, I liked basketball, but I wasn't obsessed with it. Um, you know, it was kind of more something to do. And then, you know, because at, at that point in time, everybody was, you know, I was a little bit taller than some of the kids, but we were all kind of, you know, three or three or four man, you know, type of position. And I was, you know, wasn't much of a shooter. So, it, you know, there really wasn't anything to do with me per se. But I always remember Jim always telling me, just keep working, just keep working. And then, you know, got to be a sophomore, played JV. Um, uh, you know, uh, I don't remember a whole lot about that other than, um, you know, probably coming off the bench JV because I remember Michael played up as a freshman, so he was playing JV with us. Um, and then uh, junior year, you know, it, it was, you know, a pretty senior heavy team when I was a junior. Um, and you know, I, I actually ended up getting mono as a junior and missed about half the season. So when I came back, um, I started out on JV just to try and get my cardio up and then finally got bumped back up to, um, you know, to varsity. And honestly, at that point in time, I was kind of like, what am I doing if I, you know, really don't see a future and, and, um, uh, you know, just kind of kept working out and, you know, obviously with. Krasnoy and Scott uh, Scott White ahead of me, there was nowhere to play anyway. You know, one of them mm -hmm. played basketball at, you know, Central Florida. The other one played football at Illinois. And and then, the, you know, our three-man at that time was, you know, Chad Bowman. He was six seven, So, I mean, we had plenty of height. Um, but I, I don't think I ever played more than 20 minutes a game as a as a junior. So, um, it was kind of like, you know, we, we had a lot of talent through those years. So, it was kind of like you had to – sit back and wait your turn, I guess. Right. When you were, so when you were a sophomore, we got, you got kind of a big overhaul in that you got a new head coach and yeah. uh, you got, uh, you went from um, Bennett, correct? Yeah. And so, so Bennett to, to Dave Clark. Um, what are, what were some of your first impressions of Dave Clark uh, just coming in? Well, I, I, you know, being a sophomore, you know, we were primarily JV. So, you know, we saw Coach Clark, but he really didn't instruct us a whole bunch. That was, you know, Coach Hall. Um, and I always liked that, you know, Coach Hall was a former big man himself. So he knew how to coach the big guys. You know, if we ever did individual development, the guards would go with Coach Clark, Coach Workman, and then Coach Higdon and Coach Hall would have us big guys. And, you know, uh, you know, before – you know, getting more to, to coach Clark, you know, those two were, you know, great at developing big guys. Uh, once, you know, once we finally buckled down and realized, um, you know, the work we needed to put in and things like that, they, I mean, they really know how to develop big guys. Um, and then, you know, kind of, kind of meeting coach Clark, um, you know, he, he was, I could see he knew what he was doing. And of course his, his track record spoke for itself. Uh, you know, when he was at white river Valley, I believe it was, I think they won a couple state championships, didn't they? Yeah, uh, you know, know, they, they had. Uh, well, no, they the. I think the thing the team I'm thinking of is Lions and Marco. But yeah, they were. Was it like ninety? It was like right before he came there. What came here too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because uh, I know he sent you know some of some of his boys ended up at Southern Indiana. Some of them ended up at Butler. Uh, you know, I know he had a good crop of talent down there, and you know had a real good track record coming in. Um, didn't have uh, a whole lot of, you know, as a junior, other than, you know, he, he would sit me aside at times. Cause you know, when you, with mono or something there, you couldn't have any contact cause you're spleen or something. And, and so he would, you know, he'd talk to me a lot during practices and, you know, the importance of, 
you know, there was a lot of people graduating. So there were a lot of roles to fill when, you know, it became my senior year. Um, always very encouraging, but I was always struck by his knowledge of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, you know, this was 25 years ago and I know times have changed and, you know, everybody has their different styles and, you know, it's kind of, you know, the style we played is really um, not too far off from the standard. You know, we didn't walk the ball up the court. Mm-hmm. We liked to get up and down a little bit, but I could, you know, he, you could just tell pretty quickly that he knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you just, you know, when you get into a new program like that, you've got to get the kids to buy in. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't know much about, you know, my junior year as far as buy in, but I can tell you, he, you know, at, at the end of that season, he had, you know, us juniors buying in pretty good, um, doing summer workouts, you know, to get kids in the, you know, summer to do workouts on their own, on your own. Cause back then you couldn't, the coaches couldn't have any contact with the yeah. kids. And, you know, we would get the bulk of the team there, you know, quite frequently in the summer for workouts. And, and, you know, he would put together stuff for us, but he just couldn't, you know, physically be there. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely a student of the game. That's for sure. Did he, um, when you guys were doing workouts and stuff, did he like mysteriously show up to walk laps around the, on the, around the track on the outside? He would be occasionally I would uh, get a random post-it note during earth science class and say, why did I see you shooting threes and stuff like that? So I think he might've known what was going on in there. Um, but he, he was the thing that I'll always remember about him. And it, and I've had a lot of coaches is he understood that there wasn't one single way to motivate everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, he knew that every person was motivated differently. Some guys you get in their face and scream at them and that would have motivated them. Some guys you need to sit, sit them down, put your arm around them and, you know, give them the, you know, kumbaya speech. And then that makes them play ball. Cause I can remember there were times, especially going into big games where, you know, maybe they had a dominant post player. He would sit down, just he and I, and he would roll film. And he would get me so wound up. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he would challenge me. He wouldn't um, make me feel bad or anything, but he would play a tape from the previous game. And he would say, that's just the softest move I've ever seen. You can't even score on me. And you got a seven footer that's going to Purdue that you're playing in two days. And if you think, you know, he, he just knew how to challenge me versus scream at me. Right. Now there were some, some guys on the team that needed screamed at, and that's what wound them up. Um, But I, I, I really like that he had a personal relationship with all of us to to the depth and degree that he knew what it took to get the best out of each of us as individuals to make us function as a team. Yeah, yeah, it's and it was it was something because I mean he got there and just the success that I mean in my four years there were four sectional championships um, just starting with the freshman my freshman year when I say my freshman year I mean. I was there like in the stands, obviously I didn't contribute necessarily anything to that. I think maybe I'll take some credit because I played with you a lot growing up and uh, Michael would come and play a lot. So maybe just those like backyard games definitely helped, obviously. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, So you're, you know, in your junior year, junior and senior year, um, I guess specifically, we'll talk about your senior year. And and so that's, you know, this year has been 25 years, which is crazy to think about. Shocking. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that's the year, you know, you guys made the run to the semi-state, semi-state championship game. So we'll just kind of go through this season. um, And I guess the first thing is, did you realize, did you think that, that you had that kind of, ability with that team i mean i'm i know you guys probably thought yeah we're going to be good again did you think you were going to be that good could you could you foretell that no and i and and the other weird you know the conference was stacked to begin with uh whiteland was stacked greenwood was stacked center grove's always center grove um but i mean there were guys that you know on the all county second team that were playing college basketball that's how loaded it was Um, you know, and I, and I, you know, we always, you always kind of inside out, you, you know, you want to get your local rivals, then you move into tournament play and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't think, you know, me personally as an individual, 
And as an, as a team, I, I didn't think, A, I had what I had in me and I didn't think our, you know, I knew we were going to be okay. And I knew we would, you know, maybe, you know, compete for a sectional. Um, but I hadn't, you know, it, it was really neat to watch everything come together because we kind of figured it out. We knew we could play a little bit. And I think our first test was maybe Martinsville. And, you know, of course, this was the last year of senior, you know, single class basketball. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, the rankings were throughout the whole state, not just, you know, whatever class. So I think they were number 14 or 15. And we went to their place and beat them by close to 30. Mm. And they were they were a really stacked team. They had good big guys, great guards. And we went in there and just put it on them. And I remember the bus ride home. We were all kind of, you know, in awe that, you know, we can, we might be able to do something pretty special this year. Yeah. And that was kind of when we figured out, look, yeah, we like to have fun and we like to play around because we're 17, 18 years old, but let's, let's buckle down and see what we can do. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't something I don't think any of us saw coming. Yeah. Now you talked about, you talked, you talked about um, Center Grove being good. Now th is that, that was the start. That was the first game of the year uh is that correct I believe so because that was always if i remember correctly when i was there it was always the night before thanksgiving the doubleheader girls and boys played against center grove mm -hmm. that, uh, so but then my my biggest memory from that year uh as far as the county teams go is and here's the thing once i start talking once once i start bringing up some things you're probably going to be like how do you remember this I don't, I don't, I don't remember this. I think, yeah, we, uh, but um, it's all those hours of sports center. And I just remember facts now the 7 a.m. waiting for the bus. Just oh, exactly. I can remember being late or the, <laughs> missing the bus because we had to see number one. <laughs> so what I remember is, is Whiteland and Greenwood and they had, so Whiteland had Pickett and I don't remember who the other guy was maybe Brad Edwards or something like that. Yeah, they had Brad Edwards, Pickett, Joe Haddix, um, all of them averaged close to 20 a game. Yeah. And then I remember um, Greenwood had a guy named Clint Ferguson and they were really good too. Um, and did, so did you guys beat them in the regular season too? Or did, what was we, the record? I'm trying I think I'm, I'm trying to remember who we lost to because we only lost two games in the regular yeah. season. And I'm trying to remember who we lost to. I want to say that Greenwood might have gotten us I once. think Greenwood beat I think Greenwood beat you and then someone I know we didn't lose I know we didn't lose to Whiteland. Huh. Maybe it was Speedway or something cuz they I remember they were pretty good. Yeah, I think um, for some reason Mooresville kind of got in my head, but I don't I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, I don't remember. But yeah, so you know, you're going through the season here and you're getting ready to get get to the kind of the the postseason. Um, and you've got your senior day, you know, your senior, your senior time. Um, what's going through your mind as a senior, just getting ready to embark on this and not necessarily knowing, you know, let's be honest, you're you're not totally sure if you're even gonna make it out of sectionals because just a stacked sectional with Whiteland and Greenwood in there. Um, what's kind of going through your mind? Well, that's kind of when the whole motivation kind of came to light. Cause you know, that was back when there were no smartphones and all that stuff. So all we had was, uh, Rick Morwick and that other guy from the journal. What was his uh, Mark Madsen? Or Madsen, Jeff, Madsen. Jeff Madsen. Jeff Madsen. Yeah. And so we would always get the paper and, you know, he would always do his preseason thing. And, you know, we weren't even picked to be relevant in our sectional. And, you know, I remember Coach Clark put that on. I'm pretty sure he put that somewhere in the locker room for to remind that's, us every that's time like we – People talk about bulletin board material. That was actual bulletin board material. Absolutely, yeah. It wasn't something printed out. It was an actual paper. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even a print from the computer. It's like, well, you just print off the computer. I don't. You can't even do that, can you? In nineteen ninety eight or ninety seven. No, it's the copy of the paper. Exactly, and I can remember waiting. You know, getting up early on a Saturday morning just to grab that that silly paper. But you know, we kind of started rattling off some games midway through the season. 
we kind of figured out we, you know, we were a lot talent, more talented than we thought we were going to be. And we spent a lot of time together. That was another unique thing about, I mean, hell, we even got the same stupid haircuts. You know, I mean, we would either go to the barber shop or go to pitcher's house. There were times a pitcher would cut our hair and we all looked like idiots, but we looked like idiots together. Um, and we, you know, we kind of started talking to each other more about, as individuals, what we could bring to the game. So, you know, if it was a team where maybe they didn't have size, witted size, my size, Parker size, you know, we knew going into that game that, okay, let's pound it inside, get what we can get. And then, you know, if they want it, if they bring a double, we've got plenty of shooters, but then there were other games where, you know, maybe they wanted to play zone or maybe they had big guys where we knew that, you know, the guards, you know, we're going to have a better opportunity to be successful. And, and so it was, you know, we, we would, we would talk about that a lot of, um, you know, expectations of each other. And there was a lot of unselfishness to the point where we could look at each other in the middle of the game and say, you're not pulling your weight. You know, if you're not going to rebound, you know, we're going to lose. And, and nobody ever got bent out of shape. I mean, there was never, you know, never fights about it or shoving or anything like that. I think we respected each other enough to know that, you know, if I, if somebody told me, Hey, start, you know, you need to get on the boards. It wasn't it was more of a challenge than somebody being a jerk about it. Yeah. Um, so we kind of, you know, as we went into sectional was like, look, nobody expects us to win. Let's just go out there and win this thing. We've already beat Whiteland, you know, uh, Greenwood, we played like crap against Greenwood and they might've knocked us off, but you know, what's it going to hurt? Uh, we know we can beat center Grove. We beat them out of the gate. Um, and so, you know, once in, and sectional was weird because we kind of skated through. I, I, I think there was more talent in our sectional than there was in the regional. Yeah. Um, I mean, because we skated by sectionals. Yeah. Um, so a couple things before we get started on the sectionals and regionals. From from your year, uh, two things, that maybe regular season, that stand out. Now, the main thing that I always think of when I think of that team not necessarily the run itself. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? Sappenfield knew what I was talking about. Oh, face paint? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I want to hear I want to hear your side because Sappenfield told told us and he's it seemed as though he was the originator. So well here here's here's where it originated. And I and I rem we were we were lifting one day and I can't remember if it was Jake or Pitcher, one of the two of them, because we all three played on different AAU teams in the summer. And one of them played a team called the G-Rebs. Did Jake bring that up at all? No, I don't think so. Then, Jake, then Jake's a liar. And I think it was Mark. I think because Mark played on a pretty high profile AAU team. Because Mark, you know, Mark was uh, good young as well as, you know, when we got seniors. And – I can remember their chant was G Rebs, they would say during warmups. So somehow that chant came out while we were working out, and Jake was talking real fast. And somehow, he just out of nowhere, something came out of his mouth. He said, You see that face paint? I'll face, I'll face your paint with it, or something like that. And we were all like, what in the heck are you talking about? And that's kind of where it originated. He, so he said, and I haven't, I don't remember, this was kind of, this was a bit ago. So, but basically what he said was, it was after a hard workout and you guys were dying and you were going to the water fountain or something. And he was trying to say something like, let's get our faces into, or I, I forget, but it was something, it was similar to what you said, but not completely. So. Well, that's how that's how the the face paint yes, phrase yes, yes, originated. Yes, so yes, yes. I'll, I, he he's right there. But then when the chant originated, no, I don't, yeah, from the, he, from the he, G Rebs, yeah. Which and I'll never forget. We had a this was trying to have a serious moment. We had you know I I don't know if it was before sectionals or or something, but I know it was before a big game, and he was just as serious as can be. And he looked at us and he said something about you guys need to dial in mentally and stop yelling about fresh paint all the time. And we, I mean, I almost fell on the floor. I was laughing so hard and he got so mad at us and ran us. Cause he thought we were making fun of him. 
And so we had to tell him after practice, it's not fresh paint. We're not talking about wet paint somewhere in the gym. He said, it's just something stupid that we do. And the more we chant it, the more we get wound up. And he was like, whatever. He was, I, I never, he was so mad when we started laughing, you know, cause it, it was one of those where you couldn't control it. It was just so yeah. funny at the time. I, te- I, I don't think I will ever forget that because so, you know, you and I, we were in, I know at least one class we were in together, but then also, and it was like, it was one of those te- things where, you know, the team said it and, and if anyone else said it, it was kind of like, whoa, no, 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 you can't say this. <laughs> and so, and it was even if, if you asked, it was like, what's this face paint mean? And it, and it was just, and it was that. And so, <laughs> yeah. You and I had been friends since, since I was, you were seven and I was six. Town. Yeah. And, and so it was just like, I was like, well, I can ask Joe. Cause you know, we, we've known each other. We've been neighbors since we were six. I went and asked and it was just like, boom, couldn't ask. And I think, <laughs> I think, and then that just made me more frustrated. And I was like, why can't I say face paint? Why we've known each other and boom. And then it's like, during the class, I was like, Hey, seriously, what's this face? But boom, I'm like, Oh my gosh, why won't he tell me this? Even still to this day, two weeks ago, I'm, you know, cause Henry, my oldest is in third grade now and he's playing for the junior Cubs. And uh, I'm coaching one of the third grade teams and we were walking into the auxiliary gym at the high school and it's pitch black and Henry and I are walking in and out of nowhere from completely across the parking lot, I hear face paint and it's Sappenfield 25 years later, screaming from the other end of the parking lot. <laughs> I told, I told Sappenfield on the interview, I said, I said, right now, when I'm saying this to you, I half expect Joe Hoagland to bust into my house and start hitting me in the face. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, yeah, that was, and everybody thought that it meant so much more than it did. And I think that was the weird mystery behind it is it literally meant nothing. It was just, you know, that's kind of how we got ready to play. It was just yeah. our little rally cry. Yeah. And everybody thought it was some damn secret society or something. And it was like, it's really not that big a deal. It was just Jake was talking too fast and something random came out of his mouth. (laughs) (laughs) So do you think, I mean, if we are looking talent wise, I think maybe, you know, Newcastle was probably talented, more talented than you guys, just based off of individual players and their actual talent levels. Cause they had, a few Division One players, Butler, um, um, a- Akron, I believe, is where – did that Joey Gall guy, is that where he went? He went to Drake? Maybe, maybe something like that. Something but, like that? But do you think that it was just the overall, like, connectivity of your team that is what led to so much of your success that year? I, I, th- I think there was – there were a lot of egos on our team. We wanted to win more than we wanted to read that one of us had 30 points in a game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we all knew we could all figure out pretty quickly in the course of the beginning of a game what we were going to be successful doing. Some nights that was playing through the post. Sometimes it was, you know, starting in the post and the post kicking it out. Um, we knew – one person had a bad game there were a lot more there you know that there were four or five other guys six guys that could pick up the slack um, we never had anyone feel like they had to you know carry the brunt of the production every game uh, and, and I tell that to my son a lot who's you know you know he's nine years old so he's starting to, he's getting started into sports and stuff and and I keep telling him I'm like you know you I would take five guys that are all above average, but play great as a team versus having one kid that's, you know, going to be the next star. Right. Because it, it just, you know, you you see that all the time. I mean, the Gonzagas of the world and those programs that are parental, parentally good. Yeah. They've got studs on their team, but their studs don't average 30 points a game. They might average 15 to 18. I mean, th- there were six of us that averaged between 11 and 13 points. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that I think pitcher was our leading scorer at 12.8 points a game or something. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so we had our starting five plus Parkers. We all averaged double figures and pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we, 
I think it, it was there was a lot of unselfishness that we knew it was just as important for me to get a rebound as it was for Jake to get an assist, as it was for Travis Jones to shoot in a three, that those were all equally important. Yeah, we now live in a society where it's a stat-based society where everybody just looks at a box score to tell you your worth. But, you know, we we collectively knew that if maybe we wouldn't be the most talent on, talented team on the court, but we were going to outwork you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 you know, Clark worked us like dogs. And, and obviously, and, you know, and I don't say that in bad, bad terms. Yeah. We were in shape. Yeah, we didn't tire. Um, you know, we were full court press. We were one three one half court press. I mean, his emphasis on defense was a huge amount of our success because if we went through scoring droughts, it didn't matter because you couldn't score on us. Mm-hmm. Put Michael Witted at the top of a one three one with a yeah. seven foot wingspan. Good luck. Good yeah. luck getting around him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember that from the the Newcastle game. That caused them a great deal of issues in that one. Oh yeah, and they and their guards, you know, were all D one. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and he gave them fits. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sectionals. I know you talked. You talked about. I'm gonna call you out here. So I don't know if this is right or not, but I, I told you my memory of this time is second to none. Now you guys played. The sectionals, you pl- you said you skated through. I think it was a little bit more than, than skating through or a little bit tighter than that. Now, Greenwood was Friday night, correct? And that was – When I when I say skated through, I meant barely. Okay. <laughs> I might have used the wrong terminology. Okay. Well, we, we slipped through is what I so, meant. So, Greenwood was – that was Travis Jones, correct? Hit, hit a shot near the end. Is that accurate? believe greenwood was when i hit a free throw to win the game that's right travis was i got fouled i got fouled going up for a layup with like a second left and who would have thought the worst free throw shooter on the team would actually hit one (laughs) do you do you uh do you remember that like do you remember stepping up there how you felt anything like that or was it just kind of a? I do i do because it's it's those moments the weird moments like that that you remember the almost the entirety of the Newcastle game, probably one of the best games I ever played. I don't remember any of it because I was just in such a weird zone that it just happened. Now yeah. this one, I was scared to death because I was a terrible free throw shooter, <laughs> and I'll never, I'll never forget Higdon. Higdon put his arm around me as we're breaking the huddle, and he could see that I was flustered. He put his arm around me. He goes, "It's going in," and I was like. Oh, okay. And I mean, I was a, I was a 51% free throw shooter that, you know, that entire season. And so luckily it was really odd because the first one felt good. And, but of course, when you second guessing yourself, you you think it's short and I'm like, okay, so it was two shots. It goes in. So we're up one. There's like a, a two or three seconds left. So of course I missed the second one and it wasn't on purpose. I just didn't right. make it. Witted gets the rebound and throws it back to me, and for the life of me, I can't I can't explain to this day why, but I shot a three. <laughs> it was like there's seriously like two seconds left, and as soon as it hit my hand, I shot it. I'm like, after the game, Clark goes, "What were you doing?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just wanted to get rid of the ball. I didn't, I didn't want to touch it anymore. I didn't want anyone to foul me." That's, yeah, I remember. I tell you, you know, 25 years later, and and I was just I was in the stands. Um, I still remember those two nights, just the the atmosphere of that gym. Because I don't know, as team, like what you felt towards Greenwood and their players. And I know later, like in college, you ended up playing with Pickett or somewhat. And I know you guys were were fine. I don't know if there was a team butting heads, but I know the fans – did not they i mean there was a lot of a lot going on in there and that environment was it was i I don't know how your your ears weren't ringing for a week after leaving that i i I do remember because because it was at greenwood wasn't it yep because it and greenwood had a smaller gym yeah it wasn't a bad gym but it was very compact yeah and i and i remember it was really really loud um, they had a they had a point guard. I can't remember what his name was, and he liked to flap his gums a little bit. They had two twins, the Stivers boys, that were six 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 seven, big thick guys. They were really nice guys. Ferguson liked to chirp a little bit too. Um, 
but we we didn't really get drawn into much of that. And it was one of those where if you did start chirping, then whoever was you were guarding was getting the ball the next play, and they were going to score on you just to shut you up. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we got along with the Whiteland guys for the most part. I knew um, Pickett. Uh, Pickett ended up being my roommate uh, freshman year at Franklin College. Um, and knew Brad Edwards and didn't really know Joe Haddix that well. Um, and then a couple of their guards, they were, um, they would talk a little bit, but it was more funny than like, you know, being a jerk about it. So we, I mean, but it, but there was, I mean, it's, it's County. It's always a rivalry. I mean, we would run into them for some reason. I don't know if you remember back then, but cosmic bowling was the deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we would, we would go out on a, Friday night or a Saturday night, depending on which game, which night we didn't have a game or even after the game. And everybody, you know, there's, and all those Center Grove guys, Whiteland guys and Greenwood guys would always end up at highway lanes in Franklin for some reason. <laughs> so then there'd be a little bit of chirping and, oh, we're going to beat you and da, 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 da. And, and we didn't really get sucked into that a whole lot. Um, we just kind of went out there and just played. I think yeah. we, we wanted it more than a lot of the other teams. Uh, we were willing to dive on the floor for a loose ball. Um, you know, things like that. And I, you know, we just kind of went out and played. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, re, I, it was just that atmosphere was, I mean, it was the last year of, I just, I, yeah, I've been in, I feel like a lot of gyms and I don't remember a gym just being that. And it was two hours. It was hot. It was loud because right. I mean, right when that second game got over or that first game got over, we we're, we we're up. And it was loud, and I just – I remember that. And remember, um, you know, the championship game kind of being, I want to say, secondary, but I know I know Greenwood was kind of the one that a lot of the fans at least were focused on. Yeah, because like I said, they had gotten us, I think, in the regular season. Mm-hmm. And um, Whiteland – Whiteland was one of those teams where they did have a lot of talent, but I think they – struggled with that talent because they all wanted to be the guy to make the game winner. They all wanted to be the guy in the paper and it almost like there wasn't enough to spread around. Yeah. And so we got on them, you know, pretty good. Um, I'd say what, what, what we beat them by eight or 10. In the eight, the eight, eight or 10 is what my, my mind kind of goes to. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't. They, yeah. They, they, they were picked to win it actually over us yeah. and Greenwood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so you've got the fourth fourth sectional championship in a row um, at, at Franklin. Then the next week, now here's where I'm going to impress you. I think the next week we played the regionals, and it was at it was I don't remember where was it at Columbus. I think it was Columbus. Columbus North. And the first game, this is you're going to be you're going to be impressed here. It was against Triton Central, and they had a guy on their team named Doug Pardue. Wasn't he their big star? Oh yeah, I don't 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 ask me, man. I <laughs> I tell you, yeah, he was he was a lot of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a gr- I'm a grown man now, and I don't care where you post this video. I'm uh, you know, yeah. Uh, he was a re- one man wrecking crew, though. Yeah, I mean, if he got hot, look out. Now pitcher p- pitcher guarded him, right? Pitcher guarded him, but I can't remember if it was. We had did you play them first and then Columbus yep. North for the championship. Yeah. So I remember something else about the championship. I'll tell I think it was before the Triton Central game. Was that the game that, or the practice that we were doing Grizzly Cub shooting? Remember that drill? Uh huh. Yeah. And the ball rolled under pitcher. He. he twisted yes. the hell out of his ankle yes and we we didn't know whether he was going to be ready to play or not he was on crutches wasn't he yes. yeah and then i can't remember which one happened first or second but then was when Stappenfield broke his nose that yeah that's right that's right he yeah because he talked about that I think that was before the championship of the regional so pitcher goes down the first practice then we we have another practice. Sappenfield busts his nose open and has this wonky mask, and we're like, "What else is going to go wrong?" <laughs> you know, we've got <laughs> two starters. One of them's got a hockey mask on, and the other one can barely walk. And 
I remember I got in foul trouble against Triton Central and had a decent game, but Parkers came in and I think had damn near a There we go. All right. Well, was that me or you? I don't know, but uh, we're we're back, so it's okay. good. So it's good. We're fine. So yeah. So um, those two get hurt, and then Parker's comes in, has a phenomenal game, kind of saved our butt, and because it was a close game, I think he had a he had a look at a game winner, didn't he? That Pardue kid. I think so. I think it. He might have won by three. I want to say I thought he had a, a look at a game tying shot or something, or from you know NBA range or something. Yeah. yeah. So you got the sectional uh, or the the regionals. You're at the regional uh, championship now. With this game, I remember. I remember pitcher hit a shot, a free free throw line shot, I believe, and then I think we stormed the court before the game was over. Does that, does that bring back any memories? Nope. Maybe you lost him again. Gotcha? Yeah. Okay. Did you hear that? Um, all I heard was pitcher hit a shot. <laughs> so pitcher hit a shot at the free throw line, I think. Um, and then I believe – the fans stormed the court before the buzzer sounded. You re does that yes. sound correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Because he he banked it in, didn't he? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then yeah, then they put a couple seconds of time on the clock, and I remember Columbus's coach was screaming that we should have got a tech, and then the refs were like, "How? You know, we can't keep fans from that's not their fault. Fans came on the court, and because I remember they had there was stuff they had to brush off the court. I think yeah. Too. That's uh, it's like um, Hoosiers when Norman Dale just keeps yelling. That's a gutless way to win at someone. You're just exactly. Like, are you, are you gonna? It's like it's. I mean, obviously, it's easy for us to say because you know the team you played for, the team I rooted for, won. But you're, and so maybe if the roles are reversed, you're like, yeah, they should have been given a technical. But then it's like, do you really want to win that way? Like, right? Like, is that is that how it's gonna do? So yeah, I think I think when we got to regionals, we. We, or we had a feeling we were going to, you know, we knew we, we deserved to be there and that we had a pretty darn good chance, you know, going into those two games. Cause like I said, we felt like our sectional was a lot harder than that regional was because we'd played Columbus North already and had beaten them. I mean, they had a pretty good team and they came to play um, in regionals and played very well. And luckily Mark bailed us out, but it was just, it seemed like some, something weird always happened in the right, on the right end of our, you know, to just keep us going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We definitely. were, we were living on the right side of the law those days. <laughs> so semi-state now you're playing, you're playing at Hinkle. Um, obviously you can't tell us much about the game cause you said you don't really remember it, but uh, you know <laughs> what, what, as far as like the build up to that, what do you remember? And, and did, I mean, kind of in that moment, like, are you just, are you able to take anything in? Are you able to, to process what you're doing as, in your senior year? You know, it was, I'll never forget, you know, we, we got the whatever draw and we, we won and we were, you know, we were super excited about that. Then it was time to come back to work. And uh, we didn't watch a whole lot of film in the regular season of other teams. We, you know, if it was uh, a, a certain important player, like I remember we watched film on that, seven foot kid john allison that played at new pal that ended yeah. up going to purdue we watched film on him and some individuals but we re never really watched a ton of film and i remember you know there was a note or something to meet in the in that room outside the training room i don't know what you would call it but it, it was just the, kind of the training room yeah and coach had the blackboard out or the dry erase board and the you know the vhs you know the tv on the cart and <laughs> He's got their starting five listed on the dry erase board. And four of those five guys in parentheses had the college that they had already signed with. 
Yeah. And I, I remember personally thinking, wow, okay, their starter, 6'8", 6'7". The 6'7 kid is, you know, built like Mike Krasnoy was. He was 6'7", 265, football yeah. player, big, big, strong boy. And then Joey Gall, who, you know, was uh, – he was a uh, – whatever they all whatever they, in the all-star, all-star or something yeah. um and he you know he was a big boy big strong kid tall kid and then you know you had the archie kid that could shoot it from anywhere and then the well, point he, came, he kid. came off the bench too right yeah he was like a junior yeah, yeah. A sophomore or junior yeah and it was just i remember you know coach coach could sense that we were uh apprehensive and we were a little bit uh nervous and stuff like that so you know we had a long talk and you know he was like he he it was this is going to sound weird and corny all in the same breath but there are so many and you know obviously we didn't win a state championship so it's a little bit different but there are so many hoosiers references that not only were apparent at the time but are apparent 25 years later you know, it's like sitting in there and Gene Hackman says, their top players boil, you know, you know, for da 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 da. And we were doing that and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, why not us? Yeah. You know, you've got, we've beaten half a dozen ranked teams this year. We've never cracked the top 25. We've only got two losses. You know, we've, we've played some pretty darn good teams and, and beaten them, but you got, Franklin County, you got Franklin Central, you got Franklin Community, you got all. I think we just got lost in the shuffle. Yeah, you wait know, now. I can remember what coming home. Was it, was it Franklin Community or was it Frankton? I don't. Ah, eh, whatever. I, I don't think they that we ever registered on anybody's radar. And and let's be honest, seventeen to or sixteen to eighteen year old kids. I'm sure Newcastle looked at us and said, "We got this. These yeah. guys don't belong to be here." And yeah. I think I think you know it's like the old adage, Mike Tyson, you. You know what are you going to do when you get smacked in the mouth? Everyone's got everybody's a got a game plan. And they get smacked face. in the mouth, yeah. and we smacked them in the mouth. Yeah, and it, and I can remember just the whole lead up to it, and it was, it's one of those things that I'll never forget. Uh, you know, we so we we get our our week's worth of preparation done, and we're all nervous, and we're all working really really hard, and we're all paying attention to detail, and we're all going breakfast in the mornings and hanging out at night and we're kind of trying to put together our own little game plan of what are we going to do where do we have an advantage you know we can outwork these guys but we're going to need to hit some shots along the way too and so we kind of figured out look we're going to guard these guys and we're going to frustrate the hell out of them and we're going to see what happens you know why not what do we have to lose we don't have a target on our back nobody's heard of us and so i remember they they sent out the schedule and uh, whatever day we went up there, um, I think the night before we were able to practice at Hinkle. Uh-huh. And so we got on the, the, the bus and, um, we go up to Hinkle and out of my gym bag comes a tape measure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's on the video. Yeah. So I get Craig, Craig Thompson. Craig on my shoulders and we get underneath the basket and we measure the basket and we measure the free throw line. And, and as weird as it's going to sound, I think we needed that to just ease the tension. Now, was that we your were, idea? That was. Was and that a, so, so, a road true value tape, uh, tape measure? I, it could have been, it might've been a Rhodes true value <laughs> it, to, tool of the month. <laughs> <laughs> so we go through practice and we're having a ball. And of course, you know, every, Jake's yelling, you know, Franklin, like they do Hickory, you know, up in the stands and stuff. And we didn't know that Gene White and Bobby Plump were at practice. Oh. Um, so we get done with practice and we're all taken in the environment because being in the stands at Hinkle and being on the court at, Sting- at Hinkle are two different things. Um, <laughs> I mean, talk about an intimidating place to play. Um so we get done with practice and coach is like, Hey, I got some guys who want to talk to you. And they came out and they, you know, they talked to, we all sat down and it was just one of those where they kind of said the same thing. They said, you know, nobody knew who we were. Nobody yeah. expected anything of us. Just play loose and go out and play. And why, why can't you guys win? And they gave us a nice little pep talk, which I really appreciate. 
um, and I think all of us appreciated. And so we came home the next day, and I think that was Friday night. So we're getting ready to play Saturday, Saturday morning or whatever. And uh, we we get to the school and we're all dressed in our you know warm ups and all that stuff. And all of a sudden we look around and there are cars everywhere, <laughs> cars everywhere, signs everywhere, police escorts, all this stuff. We get on the bus. And all you can see out the back of the bus is just a steady line of cars that were following us up the Hinkle, which, I mean, it kind of gives me goosebumps just talking about it. Yeah. So old, old Dave Clark stands up. God love him. Out of his bag comes a VHS tape of Hoosiers. <laughs> the bus that we rented, there were four TVs. He pops that sucker in and... Uh, he fast forwarded probably halfway through the movie into where they actually start winning and all that yeah. other stuff. And it was really weird because when we pulled into Hinkle's parking lot, it was at the exact point in the movie where it's completely quiet. And then one of them starts doing this. <laughs> and I don't know if it was Jake or somebody, but all of a sudden, you know, we're all listening to our music. We're all trying to get in a zone. We're all trying to calm down because we're nervous as heck. All of a sudden this, clap out of nowhere and then 30 seconds later the whole bus is shaking like we were we were going nuts in there and clark's like all right boys you guys got to calm down you guys save save some for the game yeah <laughs> yeah it was that was that was fun yeah so that game uh you know obviously you, you said you don't remember a whole lot um one thing i remember from that game and i told you this when i saw you a few weeks ago was that play where you got the dunk and uh, it was that was a good, really good play by I think it was Michael who saved it uh, from going out of bounds, and you just happened to be in the right place at the right time. You know, do you remember that? And and what kind of you know do you remember? Or were they chirpy or anything like that? Or what do you remember? And just running out of the tunnel for the first time. I remember. I don't remember running out of the tunnel, and and Hinkle's got that sunken floor. Yeah. So you sit down below the floor. Right. Yeah. Or I should say. Yeah. So I just remember them getting ready to do starting lineups. And where we were sitting, where our bench was, was right across from our fans. Right. And you, I mean, it was a sea of blue. And there were no other teams in there that had blue. So we all knew they were, you know, Franklin people. But I remember sitting there and my knees would not hold still. They were just going and I'm just waiting. I'm like, just call my name already. I'm tired of sitting here. <laughs> so we get out there and we do our little, you know, thing and we tip off and I, I remember that gall kid scored on me i think first play of the game or, or shortly into the game and i remember thinking to myself it's gonna be a long day <laughs> and i'm like you know because we're all nervous as heck and and so and you could tell by the way we started in the beginning they were deflecting a lot of passes and stuff like that and, and then we kind of settled in but yeah I, I i i can remember two or three possessions before the crazy play happened Went up and tried to dunk one and jacked it and missed it. Yeah, and it it was at a point where I've got I've got something I've got something for you on that. So just you can go ahead. I'll tell you something funny. So, but that was like the game was still so mm -hmm. up in the air. They were coming back on that. Correct. Somebody needed to grab the momentum back. Yeah. And so we were pressing, and it, and the ball squirted away. Witted gets it, and he he's tiptoeing the sidelines, falling back. He pitches it ahead to Mark, and I'm hauling, you know, like we're filling a fast break drill. And he, I can see him see me. So he goes towards the basket and then just flips it to me. And I think I took a dribble or two, and, and they're, one of their uh, guys, you know, kind of tried to get in my way. But once I was off the ground, it was, I knew where I was going. <laughs> yeah. I just remember you dunked it, you kind of swung, and then you let you let go and your arms were just up and your feet were up. And I'm like, man, I've been watching him do that since we were here, since I was that, six. That years. was the second one. That was against. Was that, okay. Yeah. yeah. The first one, I went in with one hand. Yeah. And one of their guys kind of tried to tried to jump with me. And then I think they figured out we were there to play. And yeah. I think it was I think it was our defense that really, really frustrated the heck yeah. out of them. So the the Joey Gaw dunk. <clears throat> So that was uh, at a point where, like you, where you, the momentum was kind of switching. They were kind of coming back, um, and they had a good, they had a, a run, and he got this breakaway dunk uh, opportunity, 
and he goes up and he and he misses it. And that was if I remember that, that was you guys scored and that was pretty much it right there. Um if you watch, if you have the video, the uh the highlight tape of your season, that's on there twice. It's played and then it's rewound and then it's played again and that's be- <laughs> I didn't know that it was recording. And so I was watching the video. I walked into a class and I didn't know it. And it was right when that, that dunk was on. I was like, Oh, I want to see that again. And I rewound it. And so it showed that. So the dunk is on there twice. Cause I asked Bill Doty. Uh, I said, cause he has the, he has the DVD in his office. I said, Hey, is there's a dunk. And I explained it to him. He's like, yeah, it's on there twice. I'm like, Yep, that's me. <laughs> so, oh man, that's awesome. I always think of that whenever I, whenever that game, I'm always, I that dunk always comes to my mind. Um, so anyway, I we've held you on here for way too long, anyways. But just kind of real quick, um, you know that that evening game, um, Sappenfield talked to us, and and I I had two questions for him. One was about face paint, and the other was. Uh, did were there people sick that day? And he said it was him and Witted. Do you remember that uh, them getting being sick? Well, we we so in between those two games, they sent us. We we got hotels up there, mm-hmm. and because there I think there was like a four or five hour gap between our game yeah. and the championship game. So we got hotels, and we all you know got in bed, and we were because I can remember we had. Gatorade bottles that we were just hacking up stuff and spitting into. Now, Witted and Jake were a lot, you know, sicker than, you know, like some of us others, but I do remember food poisoning is what he thought. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I remember there was a lot of us that had just like sinus stuff. I didn't, I didn't know that about him, but it was, that was too, you know, we played that second game one of our most important players in Parkhurst. Remember, he got elbowed in the face. Oh, yeah. Against Newcastle had stitches in a concussion. And I think had he been healthy in his, you know, uh, you know, the the shot he took to the head, um, I think, you know, would have, could have, should have, you know, Delta was still a great team. Yeah. Um, but I, I hate to say it, but I, I personally just ran out of gas because mm-hmm. I don't know that I came out in either game. And I was just – I remember – halfway through the fourth quarter, my calves were cramping and, you know, and a lot of us were cramping and, you know, we were, we were in shape, but, you know, having to play that many games that quick was, was difficult. Yeah. So the, the second game, just kind of a quick overview for anyone watching this who doesn't know, I uh, got out to a, to a 22 to nine lead and then um, Delta came back. They had PD, PD Jackson. And um, what was his brother's name? Roosevelt, Roosevelt Jackson, and and they kind of brought them back. Um, you know, when you started to realize that it was slipping away, how was that for you, or did you care because your calves hurt so bad that? <laughs> yeah, I mean it. It was, it, you know, it was kind of helpless. I mean we we were giving it everything we had. We were just running on e. Um, you know we we had had so many things go right our way throughout the tournament. Um, they were, those things were then starting to go right for Delta because mm-hmm. there were some shots that should not have gone in and, you know, things like that. And, and I, I don't know, it, it, it was a tough one to lose. Um, but I think we, we kind of, I could see it coming, you know, with a couple minutes left and, we just we just ran out of gas. I mean, we gave it everything we had, but it just wasn't enough. What did what was said in the locker room by your coach or or, or by you or anything like that? Like, did did anyone have a chance to talk, or was it just kind of you were done? Um, I remember we didn't ha- we didn't we didn't have a whole lot to say. Uh, you know, we were we we were disappointed, but we weren't exceeded anyone's expectations of what we were going to do that year uh, you know ours the coaches you know everybody's um so it it we gave ourselves about a day to feel sorry for ourselves and then you know after that it was like look you know we did something pretty cool here you know yeah you know we went further than a lot of the 
previous teams dating back to, you know, the McLaughlin days had ever gone, you know, mm -hmm. um, and we were fortunate to be the last, you know, single class tournament. Um, we learned a lot, a lot, you know, those, some of those games, especially the ones on TV gave a lot of us opportunities to play college ball because again, nobody knew who we were, but when we were on TV, um, you know, there, a lot of, there were a lot of letters that rolled in for a lot of us after those games. Uh, so it was good exposure and it was, you know, it was neat. There were a lot of things that you look back on, like our dads would take us out on Friday mornings before the games. Like, you know, we would all, our dads and us would go to Don and Donna's and have breakfast together. And, and in hindsight, it meant a lot to us. And it was, but it, we realized what it meant to our families, what it meant to the community, what it meant to the school. Um, I've just never seen crowds and a buzz like that in a long time. I mean, just seeing the amount of people that would travel to away games. Mm -hmm. I mean, even for a regular Saturday evening game, they used to put bleachers, remember, on the track yeah. Yeah. at the old band of her gym just to, you know, yeah. for overflow, and the place was packed. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was neat to be a part of. Yeah. Do you – how often do you think of that Delta game? Do you ever think of that that game? Um, I do. And I, you know, you, even 25 years later, you look back and think, okay, what, you know, maybe I should have rebounded better or called for the ball more or, you know, things like that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's the more my kids get involved in the sports, the more it brings up those type of weird memories. Yeah. Um, like, uh, like about a year ago, my oldest son asked me if I, you know, cause he's seen, you know, here in my home office, I've got pictures and, um, you know, of different things and articles and stuff and things that people have given me. And, um, and he asked me one day if I had any tapes of when I used to play. So I pulled out the Newcastle game and he sat down with me and watched it. And, and the two things he said, being an eight-year-old at the time was, wow, you got a lot of hair and, and boy, skinny. were you skinny. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's fun to relive that with, you know, and they had a, um, did you go to the high school game? Um, the, the first home game in Indian Creek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That little pregame video they had. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought that was pretty neat too. Cause yeah, he, was... he looked at me and he goes, was that you? And I go, yeah, buddy, that was me. And he was like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, well, before we go, one thing I do remember from the highlight video um, it always sticks out to me was on senior night. They had a video of each of the, the, the close up of the, all the seniors and just with their parents. And it was you and your mom and your dad. And I know, uh, I remember you and your dad just looked at each other and you just nodded. <laughs> and I, it always stuck out in my head because, you know, I, I just, I know, I, I knew you so well. Um, and just kind of the relationship that you had with your dad and just knowing, um, you know, Steve wasn't probably really a, an emotion, hourly emotional guy. And you probably, you know, you really aren't either. And just kind of seeing that was kind of my thought of Joe telling his dad he loves him and Steve telling him that he loves him. Do you still do you remember that? Like, is that something? I do. I do. Um, and that's one of the moments in life, let alone basketball and things like that, that I'll always remember is, yeah, my old man's a, he's not a, uh, a man of, of a lot of words and never <laughs> has been. Uh, but he's, he's been a great uh, father, great role model, um, great provider. And yeah, that was just kind of our acknowledgement of, you know, I'm proud of you. Um, you know, go do your thing. And, you know, it was me kind of nodding to him. Thanks for getting me to this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Joe, thank you so much for all this time. This probably went way longer than either of us. Dude, if I, hadn't, if I hadn't known you for 35 years, we could have knocked this out in 15 minutes. I know. <laughs> I tell you, it, and, you know, I appreciate it so much. It was it was a good time. It was good to catch up with you. We hadn't really talked a whole lot. And, and I can honestly say, I mean, outside of my of my mom and dad and brother, um, you know, you're probably you're as big a part of my childhood as, as anyone. I mean, I can't, I don't think either of us can tell the story of growing up or anything without including each other in it. And so it was really neat. A week, man. It was really neat to really neat to kind of hang out and, and talk with you again. So we appreciate it. Um, more than you know.
Time stands still for no one, unfortunately. That's true. Um, it's just things happen way too fast. Yeah, definitely. So once again, uh, thank you to Joe Hoagland. This was Catching Up With Joe Hoagland, 1997 Franklin Community High School graduate.